So this is the Rs and Zip, a foldable handheld projector and it is probably the smallest projector out there right now. But in case you do know a smaller one then let me know in the comments below. I know that when first seen many questions come to mind about this device. So before we dive into the specifics I have to mention that this projector is an early prototype unit. So what you will be seeing is about a 70% ready device where the hardware and software may not be in its final form. But thanks to Arzen I was able to get a peek into the future with an early hands-on and test it out and show you guys what it is like before it goes live into crowdfunding. So let's dive in. Starting off this projector surely has the wow factor because it is so compact that it can easily fit in your palm or pocket. That is when it is folded of course because when you start to unfold it you can see its unique threefold design which not only makes it stand out visually but also adds some extra versatility. Like when placed on a table it helps you adjust the angle of projection to suit your needs and the projection area can go up quite high even as far as straight up 90 degrees onto the ceiling. And there is even more to this foldable design when paired with a magnetic accessory but we will get to that in a minute. So the projection unit itself is located on the top part and next to that there is a camera for auto image adjustment just like on the most of the bigger projectors. And on the front and the back there are vent openings for passing the air through. Since there is also a spinning fan inside to keep the inner components cooled. On the top cover there are power indicator LEDs as well as an array of illuminated touch sensitive buttons. Similar to some older HTC phones back in the day. And actually many things in this projector's design do remind of a smartphone. Because it also has a power button paired with a volume rocker, a USB-C port in the middle section for charging the built-in battery and this thing even has dual stereo speakers. Sounds pretty crazy right? All this packed into this tiny device that is only 1 inch thick when folded and weights around 80 grams. For durability the frame of each of the folded sections seems to be made out of metal, covered by some plastic to hide the inner electronic components. And the shiny golden color looks really nice and premium, in a way quite similar to the golden Arzen Boom tree I reviewed earlier. And if the marketing images are something to go by there should be a black metallic colored version as well. So as impressive the looks can be, so is the hardware hiding underneath. There is an LED powered DLP projection unit that can project an image in HD 720p resolution with up to 100 ANSI lumens of brightness. There is a tiny camera paired with many built in sensors for the fast time of flight autofocus and automatic vertical keystone correction. And as I mentioned, this projector is battery powered, featuring a pretty big 5000mAh battery located in the bottom section to ensure stability with added weight. The battery should be enough for around 90 minutes of watch time and once the battery is drained you can top it up quickly with 24 watt charging support but if you happen to have a power bank or even a power outlet nearby then the usage time could be extended infinitely. And there are also dual 1 watt speakers which makes this tiny projector also an all in one projector. But you may or may not want to go with this experience as the speakers sound pretty flat and can just be considered as a nice to have rather than a decent sound experience. Weirdly I could not find the speaker openings as seen in the promotional materials and manuals so maybe that affects the sound quality but anyway here is an example. So let's get started. So let's start by unboxing the projector itself. The price for it should be just under $300. And Arzen has actually thought about this because thanks to the built-in Bluetooth you can also connect an external speaker as well. This can one up the sound experience significantly even with the smallest Bluetooth speakers like JBL GO. And since the projector is so compact with a single USB-C port the whole display connection happens wirelessly. It supports Miracast wireless display and can be easily connected to a Windows laptop or an Android phone and it should also have AirPlay support for all the Apple devices. And if you happen to have a device that does not support wireless screen mirroring but has an HDMI port then you can opt for optional streaming adapter which brings us to zip accessories. So this is where the Castplay dongle comes into play which by the way nicely matches the color scheme of the projector and seems to be made from magnesium like material. Initially you just need to pair this dongle to the projector once and you get a universal wireless HDMI connection that can now be used with a desktop PC, a streaming box or even a gaming console. So this projector can now be easily 
previously used as an external display as well. The second accessory in the Zip ecosystem is the MagPlay add-on, which is basically a battery-powered suction puck that can attach nearly to any surface. To attach it, you just long press the button to suck out all the air and create vacuum for some really strong suction power. And when that is done, you can magnetically attach the bottom of the Zip projector to it and bend it to create a preferred projection angle. So the projector placement now extends to any surface that this MagPlay base can be placed on. How cool is that? It actually seems to borrow an already known technology, since during my tests I was even able to attach an iPhone to the base station. So I guess it would be awesome if the projector had Qi2 wireless charging capability, but let's just not get over the top with this because there is already a lot going on here. And there is also this nice carrying case, which adds a little bit to the carrying dimensions but will protect the projector from any impacts or scratches during the transportation. So how does it perform in the real world? Well firstly let's take into account that it has only got 100 ANSI lumens of brightness, so you will need to use it in dimmer environments, and the darker the environment, the better the picture performance you will get from it. But from my experience with the projector, the projected image was mostly nice and crisp, with the text being easily readable, even in some places with ambient lightning on, which did not affect the overall viewing experience too much. But of course it will do no good in the daylight, because it is still a tiny pocket projector. And as far as the automatic picture adjustment I mentioned before, it works really well to adjust the image very fast in real time. You might have trouble when projecting at steeper angles, since there the automatic keystone adjustment will struggle, and sometimes even at normal angles it can be a hit or miss. But you can also try to adjust it manually, because there is a built-in menu for manual focus and keystone correction. Similar like with the boom tree, but here you can only adjust the stretch of bottom and top edges, nothing more. Other built-in settings include changing language and even updating the built-in software through USB-C port. But now, a bit more on my streaming experience with content like movies and videos. So here I have to mention again that this is a prototype device, so there are some quirks here and there that need some polishing. For example, when mirroring a screen from my Galaxy S23 Ultra, the streamed audio was out of sync with the image relayed through the projector speakers. But when mirroring from a laptop, this problem was barely noticeable, and at random times I noticed stuttering and freezing, which often ended with the projector restarting after a frozen image. But generally speaking, I found that the best streaming experience was with the proprietary Airlink HDMI dongle. And the screen mirroring from Apple devices does not seem to work yet, but it should be supported as seen in the startup screen. So yes, things are still in development, but I am very impressed already with the output I was able to get from this tiny device, because the image looks really good and I generally did not feel like I was getting too much of a scaled back experience for the sake of portability. And since the projector also supports auto rotation, there is another interesting use case for it, which I probably would not have thought of. Social media consumption. As a lot of of content we view daily like TikTok, Shorts, Reels is mainly vertical. So paired with phone screen mirroring feature it makes sense to supersize the doom scrolling onto a wall. But when flipping the projector sideways, you lose the benefit of the flexible folding mechanism and keystone correction. So placement here could be more crucial. And this portable foldable design concept creates a ton of new use cases. As it would be cool to take it on a camping trip where you could use a tent wall as a projection screen. Or for marketing specialists, providing the ability to present while visiting a potential customer. As for the presentations, it surely does the magic and will likely even attract some extra attention. And when I first found about this device, it immediately reminded of the nearly decade-old Galaxy Beam smartphone, which also featured a DLP projection model, and it was a cool innovative attempt towards portable projectors. But this device is a dedicated projector, without needing to fit the whole smartphone internals inside, and it has a lot more going for it. My main concern with this kind of design is the durability, of course, since anything that moves or folds in a way is more prone to wearing out or breaking. While well, the mechanism felt pretty solid, and I did not have any issues while using my unit, only time will tell how durable it is in the long run, and there will surely be more improvements on the way to the full production model. So it was very interesting for me to experience and test this thing before general availability. I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe to see more interesting tech coming soon. Oh, and Samsung season is around the corner, so see you in the next one.